Hey guys, Canberra here. I thought, since I've been putting a lot of time into it, I'd talk a bit about Warhammer Underworlds Online, which I picked up free to keep thanks to Games Workshop's promotion of their now annual Skulls video game showcase, and how I've been faring in the game. So Underworlds Online is based on the Age of Sigmar spin-off tabletop game of the same name, of course. A small warbands compete for dominance whilst trapped in the mirror city of Shadespire. Effectively, the game is a mixture of combat strategy and card playing mechanics, where you aim to use strategy to defeat your opponent's warriors and claim objectives, in order to score glory points at the end of a three round game. So, all these are tallied up once three rounds have passed. There are two warbands available to you once you first download the game, with a further 11 available for purchase through the Steam Store for around £4.99 each, £4.99 each, which is around €5.80 Euros or $7. I do have an opinion on that, which I will share later in the video, but for now I'd like to talk about what I've enjoyed about the game so far, how I found the gameplay, and then we'll get into kind of some of the things I think they could have done better. So to get, to get it out of the way, I've had no issue running Underworlds Online from my laptop, so I guess that any decent Rick could run it, but do check the requirements in the Steam Store. The game looks and sounds good, with the ambient music do giving off that foreboding tone being trapped in a never-ending battle, and the crunch ba battle sounds being very decent. I do like the crunch when you do attack one of your opponents. It's quite, it is quite a nice noise. Um, Gameplay-wise, I've enjoyed the tactile battles, and it does make you think about where and when to strike your opponent, or to seize an objective, or to hold your ground. Personally, I went straight for the Iron, Iron Skull Boys with Gozak Iron Jaw, the Oryx, and uh, my entire strategy has been to aggressively kick my opponent off the board by just killing their entire team as quickly as possible, and score a lot of the cards that I play uh, are to help me do that and to reward me for doing that. Um, it's had mixed results, but I have actually um, been able to cleverly play some particular gambit cards and react to taking damage and dealing damage. I've been, been able to pull off some good combos that have basically taken out quite a few of my, te my opponent's teams or put them in a disadvantageous situation. One of them you'll actually see in this highlight, uh, gameplay highlight that's playing now. There is a timer on turns, so you don't have to worry about, worry, uh, worry about players taking until another end time before they make their move but taking a moment to plan ahead would be wise you do kind of need to plan out how you're going to not only play your cards but react to your opponent's moves i kind of have learned that the hard way playing online i found the ui to be manageable i have seen people complain about it being very very clunky but i haven't found too much to complain about so long as you're able to space out the cards when you play them so you're not blocking too much uh obscuring too much from a view um, just so anybody wanting to get into the game, if you do want to cancel an action, you can just right-click the mouse. It doesn't specifically tell you that, or either that or I've skipped it over in the tutorial. I would recommend playing the tutorial, um, but again, we'll get to that a bit later. Um, a few tweaks to the UI would be nice, especially as the game has been out for over a year. It is really odd that you can't multi-select cards to discard at the end of a round, which if you could multi-select would be very useful rather than having to drag and drop individually. So the card system is quite good. It's got three main types of cards, gambits, objectives, and upgrades. They are equally as important. Objectives, especially as you make the right ones, it gives you glory points, which can help you towards your end of game score. Um, you, it is, you do learn how to strategize. So you can do anything from when to see, go for a particular objective that's in your hand to the perfect time to play a reaction gambit and catch your opponent off guard which can swing the game in your favor or protect you from losing out too heavily on your opponent's moves. It's also, Underworlds Online is also quite friendly towards players who have no experience with Age of Sigma or Warhammer in general. Steel Sky, the developers, haven't necessarily like loaded all the cards and characters with a ton of lore behind them or phrases from the, fans, from the actual like fancy setting or just tabletop based jargon in, in general. They just put everything in fairly easy to digest phrases and key terms but like I have previously said, I would definitely advise playing through the, through the tutorial so you know the terms that they do use and all the various statuses and ways of playing. And it would also help you see whether this kind of game is for you. I've seen a few people leave negative reviews on Steam because they're saying they don't understand the game. But if you do play through the, camp, the tutorial and you pay attention to it, you will easily learn the ins and outs of the game and decide whether it is for you. It is quite a slow game. And I think it kind of does show in some of the way the gameplay moves. Um, it is hex turn based. It can be fast paced if you can go in with a plan. But if you need to think or your opponent needs to think, it can slow the game. Some of the practice games I recorded to get footage for this video did take me up to, their games ran into 15, 16 minutes long. 
Um, the longest I've ever seen a game, I've been in a game so far is about 20 minutes. Um, I play quite aggressively, so I can cut cut it down, either winning or losing quite quickly. But if I, even if I have to like think what I'm going to do next, I can, you know, I can extend the, you know, game can be extended. Um, there are obviously some negatives which I'm going to cover now. I'm going to start with the most obvious one, which is that as it stands, with 13 playable warbands, 80% of them are locked behind a paywall, or at least over 80%. You get two free with 11 costing about 4.99 each as stated though at the moment there are a discount of 2.99 and this game is only just become free to keep its normal download price is roughly about 10 pound or about i think that's about 14 15 dollars um even at a discount even keeping the game as free the you still only get the two wall bands and the rest of the wall bands are only reduced by about three pound to about 2.99 or two pound by about about to 299 down to 499 and it puts off a lot of potential players and steam review certainly says much i would suggest that they either should have made the six you know doubled the number of war bands free from two to four or even tripled it to six especially if you do have 13 because that still leaves you with seven that are paid for or what they can do because of how many uh, war bands that are now in the tabletop as the actual tabletop itself has gone past shadespire into diet past Beast Grave and into Diacasm, which are the expansion packs. There are lots and lots of new warbands, so they now have stuff like for Hidden Knights of Selenesh, um, for Gloom Spike Gits, for the Caradorn Over Overlords, all these different factions, which I'm assuming will be added to Warhammer on Underworlds Online. If they're going to add new races, then they should compensate, new warbands they should compensate by making a random warband free to play. So, say if they added the Gloom Spike Gits, they can move the Iron Jaws and the Chosen Axes Dwarf Warband to being free to play rather than pay for it. That way players who don't mind spending the money can spend the money if they want to pick up a new Warband, which as it just comes back. And those who do who don't want to who don't want to spend the money can particularly wait for a warband they want to become free. It doesn't necessarily have to be in any kind of order. It can just be by random. So you effectively have one coming in paid, one going in free. So you only you only ever, let's say, put the standard for paying for about 10 or 9 warbands. So as it would stand now, they've just added Garrick's Reavers. You would have, say, something like the Sephalco Guards or Spike Claw, Spike Claw Skavens immediately becoming free to play. So that way it does offset a lot. You know, it means that you're not paying too much warbands and you've still got a, a, a fairly okay selection. I'd say probably make it four warbands free to play at any point uh, so you get a good variety so you would have say one one stormcast eternal one of the coordinate warbands uh one of the the one of the other um anim more animalistic like spike claws or the oryx and then one of the forces of death so say like the skeleton lords or the ghoul or the ghouls um the other major issue i've had besides this is being a bit frustrated with some of the dice rolls. So during your combat, you and your opponent roll respective attack and defense dice, which most of the time you're aiming for a critical success roll because that trumps anything else your opponent rolls. You will always, even if you roll a critical success on attack, even if your opponent rolls a critical success on defense, they'll still take damage, they'll just take less of it. Especially if you have a uh, character with cleave. The problem is that some of the dice rolls can be rather unforgiving in succession. I've had quite a few plan of attacks I've gone straight in, I've completely failed you know, my opponent rolling a timely critical defense roll. Then on my opponent's very next turn, they roll a double critical on attack and kill my fighter in one hit. It puts you in an immediate disadvantage and it can pretty much make the games more difficult in one fell move. <clears throat> I mean, this kind of RNG can throw up end games. I, the very first online game I played in a casual match in the opening stage of the first round, I landed three successive critical attack rolls in a row off of, in a successive combo, and effectively, my opponent had four fighters, I had four fighters. After the round was over, my opponent had one fighter, I killed three of them in one hit. Literally three of them in successive crit critical roll-backed one-hit KOs. And then, on top of that, I earned objective cards, which gave me glory. So by the end of the very first... Acti my very first activation phase um, and I'm not joking with this my very first activation phase with which you get four 
four per round. In the very first round, I had six glory points and an advantage of about three fighters. I think it was seven because I had an objective card, which meant that I had more of my opponent, more fighters than my opponent. So effectively, I had won the game before my opponent had even been able to hit me back, which was incredibly stupid. So I think Steel Sky could probably alter the critical success rates just to stop matches being won in, like, the first turn. Or, like, having major, major game swings. Because um, they seem to be happening pretty consistently, both in and against my favour. And it can make certain games lopsided to a, to a T. Other than that, most of the other issues, like how matchmaking can be slightly skewed, and the lack of some combat animations, they're all a bit samey. They don't bother me as much. The second one I just put down, Steel, Steel Sky, wanted to be fairly close to the tabletop. So if you had stylized fight animations, it would potentially be a departure from that. If you had, like, flashy fight animations, flashy kill animations, they do want to create a more tabletop feel. Overall, I've massively enjoyed the game, but the two things that are holding it back is the issue of payment of other warbands, and the fact that some people do find some of the mechanics and the overlay a bit clunky. I haven't really had an issue with those, but some people do. I would recommend maybe just a few tweaks to the UI, and a few tweaks to the to the dice rolls. But the biggest problem is the fact that they need to create a wider choice of free-to-play warbands. If you are charging £10 for a game, and then you have nearly, if we take it being 11 other characters at £5 each, you have £55 to spend on, you have to spend an extra £55 just to unlock the rest of the game. You will not be able to retain a player base this game has been out for a year, and it's quite telling that after a year, they've had to do an offer to make it free to keep. They have had to give the game away to generate a player base. And the amount of negative reviews on Steam, which specifically mention the fact that you have to pay extra after buying, after getting the game, it just it just doesn't look good. And it's a shame, because I actually think this game is quite fun. I found it entertaining, I found it challenging, I've, you know, I've kind of started getting quite into it over the last couple of days. I may even start streaming it, and I will show you where I feel the game is in its strong points. But if, I mean, if somebody from Steel Sky happened to watch this video, all you got to do is just, just give people some extra free-to-play warbands. There's, you know, I don't know how long some of these particular warbands have been out, but some of the older ones that came out early in the game's release, surely by now, after over a year and a half, in fact, because it came out in January 2020, you could easily make some of those free-to-play. I mean, make the make the Skaven free to play, so at least they've got, ex you know, people got experience dealing with a five, a five man, five, six, six fighter team. You know, I use the Iron Jaws for a four fighter team, you've got the experience of dealing with a three fighter team in the Stormcast Steel Hearts, you know, Severin Steel Hearts, and then you have Magor's Fighters, who you can use as well. Putting yourself at a situation where you can only have two options and then the rest is all locked behind a paywall, will kill your game fairly quickly, even if you are giving it away. Anyway, that's all for my final thoughts. Do feel free to check out the game. Probably by the time I've uploaded this, the offer will be over. In fact, if I try and say that this will be the 10th, so this would be the last day to pick it up for free. So I would highly recommend you do it. If you do want to buy any of the extra um, warbands, do go ahead. I mean, I've not been that affected by the paywall, admittedly, myself, because I've just bought the Iron Jewels, because that's the only one I care about. Um, the fact that you can run, a, like, I don't, all I really want to do is just stomp people with Orcs. And with Gorg Gorgaz Iron Jewels, I've done just that, with the assistance of three other Orcs, appropriately named Basher, Hacker, and Bone Cutter. I think if they'd be around, Snow White wouldn't have had a problem. <laughs> Sorry, I just want to make that joke. But anyway, I, I would recommend this game, but I would be wary and I think Steel Sky probably should look at some of the negative Steam reviews and say hey maybe we should make more Warband 3 otherwise we probably won't be able to retain a player base. But anyway that's my final thoughts. Anyway if you've enjoyed this video feel free to leave a like. Do let me know what you think of the game in the comments. Those, those of you who may have played it, those of you who may have picked it up for free, uh, thought what it's like, just uh, let me know whether you agree with some of the things I've had or disagree. I'm open to the dialogue because I do think this is, the game has a lot of potential and I think it is quite good. I mean I said that about Magic Legends and that kind of just died us. That, to me, is a bit of a dead dead loss. Um, but, you know, if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe. Do check me out on Twitch. I'll probably be trying to stream um, Warhammer Online, Warhammer Underworlds Online. I will try and stream MTG Arena. I do want to go back to streaming. Um, 
uh, on some nights. I'll see how that comes out. I will try and put out some more MTG Arena videos. But anyway, this will be all for now. I've been Cam Bear Run. Thank you for watching.